Sundays were full days for us too. We were the first to climb the broad steps that led to the elevated main entrance to the church. As daddy's oversized bunch of keys jangled while he unlocked the door, he barked out last minute cleaning assignments like a drill sergeant. I got to dust the throne like chairs and the lectern in the raised pulpit as church members started drifting in. Then we attended Sunday school, sang in the various choirs and served as junior ushers. For me, there's a special treat of friends that we only saw on Sunday because they lived a few blocks on the other side of the church and attended different schools. But the best part of going to church for Randall and what kept him showing up like clockwork was second offering. The first money collection involved the congregation leaving the pews and lining up to place their money in a basket on a table in the front of the sanctuary. The second offering was for special fundraising projects and came later in the service, after the choir sang, but before the sermon. The baskets were passed along the seated worshippers at chest level. Every Sunday, Randall placed his nickel in the basket and with the cunning of a carnival trickster, pulled out a fistful of quarters. After church, like a big-hearted benefactor, he bought five cent ice cream cones or penny candy for all of us. We'd walk home after morning service for an early Sunday dinner that was cooked and waiting on the stove. We hurried back for a three o'clock afternoon music service and then BTU, Baptist Training Unit, started at six o'clock. If there was a funeral, the Sunday marathon could go on until nine at night. Daddy had rules, never fully explained, about we could, what we could or could not do on Sundays. We couldn't iron clothes, could only listen to church music on the radio, and we couldn't go to the movies. When the weather permitted and there was no three o'clock musical service at the church, we walked to Union Station and watched people board the trains, dressed in their travel finery. The added attraction for me was a block long sculpture fountain across Market Street from the train station. Water sprayed from the mouths of fish, some of which were held by anatomically complete bronze nudes. Daddy was a busy man who assigned little importance to connecting the correct name of his children to the appropriate child, especially the girls. We scurried around the church on Sundays trying to avoid him, but sometimes he would catch a glimpse of one of us and give us some tasks to do. We were accustomed to his rapid, rapid rhythmic roll call, Vern, Beverly, Jean, Tootie, Vivian. We always stood frozen, waiting for his amused exasperation at his futile attempts. Then he would beckon with one sharp flick of his closed fingers and say with a chuckle, come here, girl. It was an infrequent opportunity to laugh at and with daddy openly.